morning, everybody. Today is lovely November 1st. It's the first, uh, I guess, week, day of November. It's it's a better one of those days. Um, but uh, I, I have some few things on the farm. Uh, some things a bit different than before. So I'm going to do a quick aerial view and show you guys what is... I guess new um, and if you guys like it make sure you guys do subscribe and but this is the newly of the Millennial Farm so here, here's the new I guess intro trailer of my new farm Well, that was your, I guess, aerial view, montage, whatever you want to call it, uh, for the day. Kick this into eighth gear. We're gonna head over. This is this is a Mac Anthem, by the way, in case you're wondering. Um, but this is basically a like a replacement or a um, 
the version of um, his Peterbilt. So uh, we got we got a kind of a mixed thing going on here. Uh, we have some new and old equipment, uh, kind of in the era between uh, era, uh, kind of in the um, uh, time frame between like 2018 when he last had like the 635F headers and the uh, like a 9650STS and the um, you know like a yeah, you know, the uh, the white Kenworth and with the blue design stuff. Um, that was you know kind of in 2019 really uh, was kind of the last year that that was in use. And then like after 2019, that's when he had like the um, uh, flex draper header by John Deere, the uh, 740 FD, and he also you know like in 2020 he had demos and. Um, 2021 is when he bought the S780, and then like last year, 2022, he bought the um, Honeybee header after trying it out in 2021. So yeah, there there was a, a lot of difference. So uh, I know a lot of you guys are asking, what year am I basically going on? Because when I'm doing these videos, you know how I go by year by year. I made things a bit different. I'm just gonna have a mix and uh, go from there. Um, it's gonna probably start out old and then work its way new or new to old, depending on financial wise. But I like having both because I can, you know, I have a little bit of the freedom that I want with using both. But um, I switched out the trailers. I had the Super Hopper, 53 foot Super Hopper Wilson trailers. I switched it out for the um, base game. Um, because they're fine, but there's something with the, um, 53-foot Super Hopper. Uh, they're great trailers. I like them, and, you know, and the mud flaps and everything like that, but when I hire the worker, I can only fill up 20,000 liters, or the first hopper. I can, I can fill up the second hopper, but they won't empty the second, the back hopper, the rear hopper, only the first. Um, so... And this one I can load up both before, no matter what order I can. I have to load up both uh, for forty thousand uh, before this truck can even leave with the worker. So I'm not quite sure. I don't think I'm gonna have a worker on this uh, particular truck. Um, I know I didn't just do that. Alrighty, so let's hop in the S780 and let's get some wheat harvest done because I'm waiting for parts uh, from John Deere for my other two combines that are out in the field with their headers. Nothing broke yet, but... So this is going to be my first time running this combine on wheat and a 45-foot honeybee header. Um, you guys will see this in use for my soybean harvest, which will be coming out soon. Um, but as of right now, and I am manually driving, manually driving this, no worker, because if you look, it stubbles on the wheat stubble. It just, you know, gets rid of it. It's really, really, really cool, and that's kind of what I wanted. So, uh, Jim was driving this combine before. He said that. Uh, everything should be, I may have to do a few tweaks, you know, like raising the reel up, maybe a hair, um, maybe extending it out, but he said he was going about two miles an hour, so I am a little bit nervous, he said reel out, and off we go. Uh, okay, Jim. I don't know what you were doing in this combine. But this is running well. Wheat harvest. sample looks to be doing good. Let's see. 
We're just doing the end rows right now. Um, I got to do, I think, another two headlands on this side. And after that, then I start going on like a 5, 10 degree angle, uh, depending on what I feel like. So, I'm going to stop it, raise the header up, and turn that off. Go ahead and hop out and see what job it's doing. So you can see where it uh, gets rid of. This is the part I like, and I'm hoping the Mississippi, uh, I think it's Alma, Mississippi, uh, is going to have the stubble destroy um, factored into it because I really really like it along with like the wheat being in rows uh, if you look in the distance you see they are actually like an 18 inch spacing or something uh, you can see the grid lines uh, which is what's really 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 cool about it um, and you can even see when I, I kneel down you can see how they are kind of in like a, a row kind of a situation which is primarily what wheat is in real life. Um, so if they can get like the textures, I know the soybean textures are in rows, um, and they're, but if they can get, and I, I think the corn though is like a maze. Um, they're they're in like 22 inch or 18 inch rows, which is not primarily what I like um, because they're all so close together. But when you're doing like a side view it looks realistic because they're in a row, right? When they're in the row, they're very close together, so I can understand that part. Um, one to five. Good. So I'm just going to trim my reel down and back um, because I feel like I am losing quite a few bushels um, in the tank, but... Uh, other than that, I think the, the yield is doing what I was expecting it to do, so um, I think we're all good. Got about three here. Let's see if this does any better. I'm going to be surprised. this really made a difference. Looks to be just the same, so. So far, no yield lost as I just made those adjustments, so it seems like we're just gonna be going back and forth. Um, so I'll see you guys when we are hopefully emptying into, the, getting the first wheat load into the trucks. Sorry about that, guys. Had to hop out for a moment. The buzzer went off on it. And I turned the camera on, went out, and was checking around. I knew the horn would go off. But I wanted you guys to hear the horn. So I got 90 feet done, uh, which is basically two headlands, and I'm doing my calculations, and I think I need to do one more. So we're going to go ahead and get that out of the way but before I do that I gotta go up and down so we're gonna do because I'm doing it on an angle so this is set to where I need it turn the header on and off we go this is This is the interesting part.
Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, it is good to be here. I got the, um, the farm all set up and ready to go. Um, if you guys don't know, um, I build or, or rebuild uh, different farms in real life. So one of them, uh, which is a series that's been going on for quite a while now. If you haven't already, please do subscribe and share and like and do all those uh, different little things. But And comment if you want. Um... But one of the maps, um, or one of the series that we all know and it's famous for is the Millennial Farmer series. Um, and I know exactly what you guys are saying. If, you, if I've done such a good series, why haven't I moved on to another one? Uh, it's, I think mainly because this is like a farm, like almost like, it, it was like my dream farm. Uh, it, it's kind of weird to say that, but it, it's... When I started watching his videos and started knowing about his farm, um, and way before I, you know, was, you know, watching his YouTube channel back in 2016, 2017, um, I just, when I was thinking to myself when I'm older, maybe farming and stuff, and this is my farm, and I, you know, mapped it out very similar, and I, I knew with the grain bins, and I studied all the vocab, you know, stuff, right? And, um... One of the things that came to mind was basically almost like this farm, right? And so it was crazy to think to myself when I started watching his videos how it, like it's almost like my farm's already built. So anyway, I uh, you know I started watching his videos and since then it kind of inspired me to kind of build. When I started going on farming summer nineteen. Um, and it, before his, the map was released, I was going based off of things from scratch, uh, and especially on my older channel, I was um, pretty much building things um, from way back, you know, where, where they didn't think you know, I could build it, kind of a deal. I was going way back at the beginning of FS19, uh, when mods were just starting to come out, all that stuff, and it's almost like impossible to build uh, the Millennium Farmer. If you remember the old, old equipment tour I did, um, it was actually uh, an equipment tour of um, me going off of, the, you know, like almost like his farm, um, when FS22 uh, first got released. And, um... It was it was interesting um, because I thought you know nobody's gonna watch this yeah 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 and it turns to find out that people actually were interested in it and that you did watch it so it was a, a huge thing for me um, for sure watching people that were watching those videos but um, let's see I think this is the trailer I have to pick up. So, I am spending money like crazy again um, on this series. So, we're starting right uh, kind of back on it. It's, this is, by the way, if you don't know, this is Alma, Missouri, not um, Mississippi. I don't know where I came up with that, but it's Alma, Missouri. It's a real life thing, I believe. Uh, now, I know Zach Johnson, the Malaya Farmer, is going to. If he watches my videos, will start giving me some feedback why I have a cedar drill as a case on a lovely, you know, not case farm. I'm going to go with this one because it looks cooler. Um... No, I'm not gonna have one. Okay, so I got that all set up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is because it's early in the morning, I have uh, one of my neighbors or actually John Deere is giving me as a like a demo. It's not really a demo. Um, it's only because it's my first, this is going to be my first season of Harvest on on this particular map. Um, and I am scrambling, I'm trying to get things done. Uh, so John Deere, uh, Midwest Machinery, at the, which is his uh, machinery um, for John Deere, his dealer. 
um, has lent me, I am leasing it for rent. It's not like a, it's not really a demo. Demo is some kind of free. Um, I'm just doubting you, right? This one I'm leasing. I'm, I rented out, um, I forget what it is. It's a 45 foot John Deere header with an auger. It's the newly styled one and it's an older S670. Uh, you guys saw the little montage video I posted um, in the beginning of this video, um, which is a little cool area shot and you're gonna see more of it. Um, but it is waiting out in the field for us. So I just have to go there and figure out what I have to do. I got a load of soybeans I gotta take back to the farm. Our grain system, um, that's basically what's gonna be is me hauling trucks back and forth basically because I uh, still, you know, I'm still modifying a few things on the combine, um, but I got the headlands all done late last night, uh, which is really not what you're supposed to do when the moisture starts going with dew point, but uh, that's beside the point. We were able to sort of you know, get the beans out uh, on the on the headlands and yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I am gonna get an NRX, I think, a, a uh, some kind of uh, tractor that John Deere's gonna give me with those two thingamajigs. Alright, so, I'll see you guys back on the farm. So, a little change of plans. Um, I decided let's get some corn harvest done because I saw this field, it looked right, but the corn was down, I wanted it out of the way. Um, we got some down corn. Um, some short corn as well. These are spaced closer. I'm using a 30 inch header which is probably not ideal for this uh, corn but you know um, let's go ahead and check the job it's doing. So the stocks I am you know smushing down which is really good I like uh, how these modders have done this uh, for console especially I love now this is also like water ham or something like that you would see on the cornfield this is like really realistic um, but the only thing I can say is um, it, it's it's some down corn that's all all I can say so going four miles an hour it's not pleasant 12 row corn henner I don't know Swing around. Get you guys a drone footage as to what I am dealing with here in just a moment. So this is the drone footage. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of like water and stuff like that that's getting in there, but the corn is not really staying in its row uh, because of the wind that we had. We had the storm that came through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but other than that, I mean, look at we're trying our best, doing what we can, getting it done. Um, it's feeding in the combine somewhat nicely. Um, but we just, we need, <laughs> we did not need this, that's for sure. I have the dividers all the way up just to try and keep the corn from like being smushed or something. I'll do another two passes and then uh, I don't know. This is just not ideal for corn, that's for sure. Not 
the best year. Again. Uh, five to four, or uh, one to four. This is. It's not the greatest corn I've harvested, that's for sure, but I mean, it's going. Um, the ideal conditions, uh, we're yielding, I think, at 70% right now, 60-70%, uh, which is a little bit of average, it's a little below average on our corn, this is down corn, so, um, at least the corn is standing somewhat, it's just, you can't identify the rows, it's just so, you know, discombobulated, but, um, it's up to you. We can go on the 90, you know, of uh, east and west. Um, or go on the 30 degree angle. It's up to you. Um, I think the 30 degree angle may be the best uh, for what we're dealing with because we can identify the rows, but we can also do, or the 45, I should say, 45 degree, 22 and a half is close. Um, or we could just go nine, you know, east and west. Up to you. Hmm. This is the struggle. So I'm not 100% sure if I'm being honest uh, with you guys because this corn, uh, it's good corn. Uh, I, I, you know, we all like to eat corn, but I'm just gonna take these ends right off, but. I'm a bit afraid, actually, being completely honest. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a uh, path where I'm going uh, east and west uh, just along the edge of the road only because it does go on a little bit of an angle. Um, and that's how I could just kind of straighten things out, square it all off. So we got three, we're only doing three headlands at the ends. That's pretty much all we need. Um, but let's see here. I want to do... We're going to be on this kind of an angle here. This is bad. This is really bad. I'm, I'm going seven miles an hour because it's just that bad.
forgot I'm also the green car driver because I'm the only one at this field. So, uh, Nate went back to the farm uh, to check on the corn dry that we're setting up. So, it'll be interesting. Oh gosh, I gotta hop out of here again. Oh, cramp. It's the cramp. It's a light cramp. It's okay. Unloading right now, um, what do we have? We have, um, we have about 300 bushels that are going right now into the tank, or into the grain cart. Um, this machine is, in, you know, the newer out of the two I own, so it's going to allow me to hop out of the cab, whatnot, and uh, do, like, an inspection. Um... Not seeing anything. Um, we're going on a three degree angle. Uh, not ideal as I want, but uh, it is what we're doing. We're doing a three degree angle. Um, and it is what it is. Tillage is gonna be real interesting. I'm thinking I'm just gonna go on a straight or something um but um John Deere dealers out of the field we're gonna get soybeans done we're gonna call it a day here uh shut everything off and I'm gonna shut this off and wait for my ride apparently I'm supposed to have a ride showing up so I'll see you guys at the field Would you look at this beast? This is a John Deere S670 um, a unit, a 2012, and this is also the header it came with. This is the HD45X um, header. It's a draper belt with the auger. Um, ooh, the interior smells new, but it's, you know, it's a rental. Did you hear that? It's very quiet in this cab. So there's already some uh, grain in the tank. There's 800 metric duels uh, that are on this uh, particular uh, combine. Open up my yield map, put the auger out. I ran through this so I know what I am kind of doing. We're going to top off this truck, bring it back to the farm, and then we're going to get that corn dryer set up. That unload auger is so quiet. We'll probably get to fill up this, uh, this truck. Which is on there? 39.2, huh? A little bit more, huh? Alright, so the cruise control is set for 4 miles an hour. The headlands are done. I got my AB line set with, you know, 5 degree. Header on, separator on, header down, cruise control on, here we go. First set of beans of 20 whatever year this is. It's harvest time, look at that.
Oh man, this is awesome. So, things I like about this combine. The seats are very nice and comfortable compared to uh, the STS series, the 70 series, and the, you know, the 50, the 50, blah, 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 the 50 series. This combine is very quiet. Um, you don't hear a lot, you know, of which is in a way good, um, but at the same time not, because if something goes wrong. But at least you can open up the window, and then you really hear. Uh, it rides smoothly, even with these 800 meter duels, which is just like with the 9870. I think it has 650 duels. Um, oops, gotta get that back up and rolling. I'm losing track here. Oh, wrong camera setting. Get back on the... There we go. Um, so the duels actually ride a lot uh, smoother than I expected. Um, I was expecting some rough up and down motion uh, with the terrain. But we're going four and a half miles an hour. It's keeping up with the header. Uh, despite its horsepower, the header is no problem um, whatsoever. And the other thing with it is it can, you know, consist with the grain going in. It does a, a clean grain. Now, it could be cleaner, but I'm not complaining. And uh, there's not a lot of uh, grain loss from the header nor from the tank, you know, from the separator. So, um, it's doing an ex excellent job. see behind me all the controls very nice easy um, no problems with it whatsoever uh, we are running with a 45 foot header which is 10 feet wider than my the two that we have uh, we have 635 F headers and um, this is collecting a lot more of the yield than the auger style headers. The reason being is the auger, um, and this one has the auger, uh, which I don't know how to turn off or function, but um, it's not a problem. It's not touching uh, at all. The It's actually a light feed um, with the belt. The belt's really what's doing the job uh, with this header. It's a draper belt. The auger is kind of just there in case you want to do some bushy canola or something. We don't need the auger, the cross auger, um, because it doesn't do anything for the beans. Um, but let's see. We got to lift it up here. This is a waterway. It's going to be, and see, it's nice and smooth when it just goes right in there. Nice and smooth, you don't really have to worry about much. It's nice. Drop the header back down. Super, super nice. Very easy to control. I'm liking it. Um, let's see what the other thing is. Oh, steering. Steering is still the steering. Steering is very easy on it. Um, you know, we got a good grip. Um, I love how it feels. It's another thing that's good with it. It's just awesome, but let's see. Drop the header down. We're cutting it a bit short over here because those were, um, not with this, uh, header. Um, the end rows, so... They're not 45 feet wide, or 90 feet wide for the headlands. They're, I think, only 10 below, 80. They're 75, that's right, 75. 70, 70. And that's where they, they parked the header trailer, huh? Right in the middle of my field, right where I have to be cutting. It's all right. This is a small little area, it's not like, it's a huge deal. Just kind of cut right back on. It can go, I'm going right now, I 
26 miles an hour and look at it. It is chopping away. Okay, I got it. Okay. Let's get beep at me and beep at me. row, huh? So we got this side of the field open up, at least. side because that's just it's like the entrance slash waterway and water drains mainly that's why I like slopes here a bit uh, the yellow of the beans uh, as a few may wonder are actually on average um, I'm a bit surprised myself um, but they are yielding average uh, despite no water this year we had a very heavy drought in uh, June July and then August it poured but um, yeah, we had to drop the summer, or the early summer. So, um, right when we were planting and stuff, there was just no, no water whatsoever. We, we were watering them. And, um, yeah. So, these beans, um, I mean, and then, because August, the corn was very tall, and we had a storm that came through, and these beans were just fine. You know, we didn't get much wind damage from these beans. Uh, it was really the corn that got the damage. Uh, they were just, the rows were crumpled over and was not good. I am a little bit curious. We may do some rye, I think, is another crop we could do. As a cover crop. to the end. Alright, more montage. <sighs> Nate just called me. They need me back in the farm because the uh, dry or something. My machine. <sighs> Let's get to a nice, you know, drone footage and stuff. Guess I'll just use the one I did in the intro. That was an adventurous walk. Back to the farm we go. Yippee! We're back on the farm! I get to unload the first load of soybeans, because we haven't taken a truckload back to the farm yet. 
because we had just started and then they decided to call me during harvest to fix something. And I guess the corn drive was more important than me harvesting soybeans, but you know. We'll put it on the east pit. Also get a load. I oh, know why it's not working. Duh. That's because they didn't put any propane. <sighs> Millennials. work like a charm. I guarantee. Let's see. Yep. So now what I do is I'm going to fill this up again because I know we can hold more than 40,000. We're going to fit another, I think, 10,000? It can hold 50,000, I think, is what it can hold. So that's doing that. Hello? Oh, fine. Go pick it up. We gotta go pick up the air drill whatever thing on the farm, because it's important, and I don't want to, but I have no choice, and I have to, so. Oh, then I gotta start doing some tillage, because it's October, and we're gonna get the snowfall. Oh my gosh. It's just never ending. Thank you guys for watching. And, uh, stay tuned. I don't know, uh, I gotta find a different segue. See you guys in the next one. This is a good one. Till next time. Hmm. I can't say that one. That would be copyright. Um, hmm. I don't know. See you guys in the next one. Luca, out.